All right, in this video, uh, we're just gonna do a quick uh, quick and dirty base map for S300. Um, this particular setup has 1000 cc injectors, uh, four bar map sensor, and Skunk 2 Pro 1 cams. Um, so as far as um, cams that you're gonna see on a regular basis, these are probably one of the more difficult ones to get uh, started and running in idling. Not that they're hard, just uh, it's, noticeably different than like B16 GSR type R cams. So um, with that said, uh, let's take a look. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you have S300 set up on your computer already and your USB drivers work. Um, so basically step number one is we'll go to new calibration. Um, and then I always just start with stock P28. It uh, doesn't seem to really matter which one you go with, but I always use P28 computers uh, for S300, so I just start there. Um, you can see the factory stuff's pretty ugly, um, but for what we're doing here, it really doesn't matter. Um, so step number one is go to parameters. Um, and most important thing that you get correct is changing to whichever map sensor you're using. Uh, in today's day and age, uh, the Hom Honda Omni OmniPower 4 bar um, is basically in everything. So we'll start there. Um, and then I'll usually just run through these tabs left to right. Um, yours may be set up in a different order. Um, so boost control is not enabled. Uh, boost cut. Um, again, this is a base map. You shouldn't be going into boost or doing any of that, but it's still just good habit to go through everything. Um, very few people uh, still run factory oxygen sensors. Um, so I just set everything on open loop um, unless there's a weird situation where you don't. Uh, we're not using closed loop, we're not using any of this. Just make sure flex fuel is disabled if you're not running that. Um, fuel compensation, you can play with this a little bit if need be, but we'll come back to that. Um, fuel injectors, this is going to be the next uh, most important thing. So again, this one has 1000 cc injectors. Um, and make sure that uh, your injector flow rate matches up with your fuel pressure. Um, and then you can either fill in uh, your dead times here from the data sheet from an injector manufacturer, or um, sometimes they will have a drop down. In this case, they do have ID 1000s, so we'll start there. Um, again, if your fuel pressure is different, um, this may change. Um, and then after that fuel trim, uh, this overall fuel trim right here is gonna be um, pretty important um, for just getting the car up and running, but uh, we need to get running before we really play with that. Um, never a bad idea, just throw a few percent in the cranking fuel trim. Um, and if you really want to go crazy, you can, I don't know, let's say a 2% to uh, cylinder number three. Um, that cylinder typically is the one that likes to go. Again, it's a base mount, you're not going to be really beating on it. Um, and then after start fuel adjustment, um, you can take a couple percent out there. Again, not totally needed, but usually that's where you end up. Um, gear compensation, um, you can select which trans you have. this. Um, the idle tab, um, I suggest with basically everything start at a thousand RPM and then you can go up or down as needed. Um, and then uh, as temperature goes up, you can add some more. Um, this idle dangling, you can just uh, increase that a decent amount. Um, again, with the Pro 1 cams, you're probably going to need to adjust uh, the actual throttle um, stop because um, you will have to increase the, the airflow at idle. Um, if you don't have an idle control valve, you can disable it here. Um, and then this ignition compensation, um, I modified this pretty heavily when actually tuning, but for the sake of starting the engine, those numbers will work just fine. Um, ignition compensation, you don't really need to play with that uh, just to start the car. 
Uh, launch control seems to be what most people care about uh, more than anything else, um, but for now we'll leave that disabled. Already did map. Miscellaneous, um, disable the knock sensor. Um, I generally would just disable things only if I need to. Um, so if we're not gonna get an error code for any of this stuff, then I will leave it be. Um, and if you're running the CPR, um, you can enable it right here. Um, we're not running nitrous. Um, notes, this is uh, the notes tab I use like crazy. Um, like this could be 1000 cc, four bar, 262. And uh, under data logging, um, you can enable this if you want. Uh, again, don't really need that at the moment. Um, <clears throat> I always enable overheating protection. Um, so many of these cars um, run really hot. Um, usually anything like 215, 220. Um, and then if you want to add a rev limiter, you can, like, let's just say 5,000, so you're not blasting into VTEC. Um, rev limits, um, for what we're doing here, doesn't really matter, but let's just say, uh, oh, control J pulls this up. It's easy to, easy way to make, uh, a lot of adjustments at, at once. We'll just say, I don't know, 9,500. Um, and make sure the security is disabled, um, shift light. Um, this turns the actual check engine light into a shift light. Um, traction control is off, uh, TPS ignition and VTEC. Um, the easiest thing to do really is just disable VTEC at first. Um, and then TPS. Um, this right here, the minimum and maximum readings is gonna be the most important step um, once we connect to the car. Um, and really, I think at this point, the car basically should start. Um, we can go here to the low cam ignition. Um, just set anything, say 1300 and below. Um, basically here in the idle portion of the map, we can just set to 16. Um, and uh, this is pretty ugly fuel curve, but um, again, once we start it and running it, we have two options. We can either use the overall, overall fuel trim or we can just adjust this portion of the map right here. Um, so let's connect to the car and see if this thing will start. All right, I guess this is the point of the video where I gotta say, uh, do this at your own risk. Um, whoever, if you manage to hurt your motor just starting the car, um, you probably had some other issues going on. Um, and then this is also just like a quick and dirty, like I need to get this started real quick. This isn't meant to drive on, it's not meant to go to the racetrack. Um, so this is started up, make sure you don't have any leaks um, and get it ready to make sure that it can go to the dyno. Um, now with all that being said, um, once it's time for the actual real tuning, um, everything is pretty different. Um, and a lot of these settings that'll just get us up and running, um, they will be tweaked and modified and all that. But again, um, this should get you up and running. Okay, now we are uh, connected to the car. Turn the key on. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is click on uh, this little lightning bolt to connect. And go to parameters, TPS. Um, and with our foot off of the gas pedal, we're gonna click read for minimum reading. And then we're going to put the gas pedal to the floor and then click read for maximum reading. As you can see here, um, there's a little bit of an offset. Um, it's pretty normal. Um, now, if your maximum reading only goes to like 40 or 50, maybe 60%, um, then you probably have um, an actual problem that you need to address. All right, one more thing that we can do. Um, let's see, go to closed loop. Uh, we can set a wideband up on pin D14. Um, this one, I believe, is 9, 0 volts, 16, got 5 volts. I'll verify that, that might not be right, but uh, for the sake of this example, 
it'll work well enough. Um, now, obviously, uh, there's a wideband in this car that I can look at the digital display. Um, so once you start it, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's not uh, just excessively rich. Uh, if it's on the lean side, you're not gonna hurt anything at idle. Um, you can always add fuel in. Um, but if it's really rich, you can do some damage. Um, so if that's the case, uh, shut it off, make some adjustments and start it again. Um, now if we start it and it's in the ballpark, we can make some real-time adjustments. Um, and again, this has Pro One cams in it, so it may or may not start on the first try. Um, and then the other thing I usually do when I'm doing a base map like this, I just give it a little throttle to start it. Um, it just, it helps. Once you get it up and running and tweak it and get it in the ballpark, then uh, you can you try and work on starting it without giving it any throttle. So uh, let's see if it'll start. So basically, um, if you go here to options, if you click on real-time updates, um, that will allow you to make changes um, real-time, obviously. Um, so it's nice, so you can you know, add a couple percent here and there and see if it's actually doing what you want it to do. Um, usually you don't want to swing things like crazy. Like if you're adjusting something five to 10% and it's not changing, um, something isn't right like so you don't want to swing at a hundred or two hundred percent um, if that's the case then um, you know something's really out of whack um, the easiest thing to do to get the fueling in the ballpark I'd, 
usually it doesn't go quite that smooth um, where you start it up and the air fuel is that close, but it just shows if, if you everything's set up on the car right, like this side of it's pretty easy. So if you're having major problems with this side of it, it's most likely something's wrong with the car. Um, either the injectors aren't what you think they are, you have the wrong map sensor selected, um, the timing's off, like the mechanical timing belt timing, um, and that type of stuff. Um, and then the other thing that you're gonna wanna do uh, once you get it up to operating temperature is uh, make sure you go up here to online and then click on set timing and then you're going to want to sync the ignition timing um, to the ECU so make the adjustments to the distributor um, I'll do another video on that as well um, and um, but if your fueling is way out the easiest thing to do rather than messing with the actual fuel table um, just go to parameters, uh, fuel trim, and then overall fuel trim. Um, so say air fuel is 11.5, just take out five or 10%. If that does what you want, take out another five or 10%. Um, past that, you can uh, go back and make some changes to the fuel table um, and then eliminate this fuel trim. Um, I usually try not to go more than five or 10% on the fuel trim. Um, if I need to go more than that, then I'll make changes elsewhere to kind of smooth it all out. Um, I've seen maps before where guys are basically maxing out the overall fuel trim and then when you make other changes to the car then you kind of put yourself in a bad spot because you run out of room to make those changes um, along with other things. Um, so that's basically about it. Um, again with the Pro 1 cams, um, I've already tuned this car before so I've already mechanically set the throttle body. Um, that's probably why this just started as easy as it did. Um, so if you go to the idle control and you max this uh, idle slider all the way out um, and idle still, it will still won't hold an idle on its own without you giving it some you know, gas pedal, um, then you need to mechanically set the idle in the engine bay. And then once you do that, you need to recalibrate the throttle position sensor. Um, and you also need the idle control to be able to, to work. Um, if you have it all the way decreased, it's kind of maxed out. Um, in one direction or if you have it all the way increased it's maxed out another so in a perfect world you have it somewhere you know right here in this middle region um, and then there's endless of other kind of tricks and things that you can do to get cars to idle well um, honestly Honda is idle control or lack thereof makes it pretty terrible um, it just this little slider is kind of all you get um, basically all of these idle adjustment points up here don't really do a whole lot, um, but they will enable um, these ignition compensations down here, um, which will help smooth things out a little bit. So if you would like to see more Honda or related stuff, uh, just leave a comment below. Let me know what you want to see. Um, I'm not sure what time it is. I might throw this on the dyno real quick to do some uh, couple of other videos. Um, so if you want to see those, make sure you subscribe and uh, hit the like button, all that annoying ass stuff everyone uh, says, but uh, as annoying as it is, it works, it makes a difference, and um, if you guys seem to enjoy this stuff, then uh, I can make probably 100 videos on this stuff. So um, until then, I will uh, see you in the next video. Thanks.